All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the natural exponential function. So we call this function the natural exponential function because it has the base e. And we know e is approximately 2.7 and so on. So um, because it has a base greater than one, we know how to graph this function. So when you graph this function, the natural exponential, it's just like our regular exponential, but of course the base is e, so it's gonna have a shape that looks like this. So something like this will be the graph of e to the power of x. And this point right here, that's the y-intercept that is zero comma one. This graph also has another uh, property. It has asymptote. So this line right here, the x-axis, which I'm drawing it with dotted line, in a different color. This represents the horizontal asymptote of this function because as um, x goes to negative infinity, which is this direction right here, we just let x go to negative infinity and the function e to the x is going to approach zero. It gets very close to zero, but it's never gonna touch. So it has a vertical horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Now let's go ahead and write down the domain of this function. This function, because our variable is now exponent, it is defined everywhere on the real line. So we can say that the domain, it's going to be all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. What about the range of this function? Well, for range, we look at the y-axis and we see where is the, what's the lowest value and what's the highest value. Now for the lowest value, well, it doesn't go beyond its horizontal asymptote. So you get very close to it right here. So we can say that the range of this basic natural exponential will be from zero because it gets close to the asymptote and then it just shoots up to infinity. So the function is keep on growing, growing, growing. So we can say that it's gonna just keep on growing exponentially. So the range is zero to infinity. And we see there is a horizontal asymptote. So HA is for horizontal asymptote y equals zero. Make sure to write y equals zero, not just zero, because you have to make it clear, is it a vertical or a horizontal? This is a horizontal asymptote, so we write y equals zero. So these are three key information we know about this natural exponential function. Now let's go ahead and start sketching this function with uh, applying transformations and say how you feel about that. All right, so let's go ahead and graph this function. This is a natural exponential because we see we have e to the power of x, there's a negative in the front, which indicates there is a reflection. So let's go ahead and uh, start with the basic function. Again, you don't want to make table of values because we don't like to do that. That's a very slow process. We like to use transformations of functions. So e to the x, like, like I mentioned earlier, it looks like this. So this is our graph for e to the x. And we know it has our horizontal asymptote right here at y equals 0. So all of this belongs with e to the x. And this point right here, that's the coordinate 1, 0, comma 1. Now let's do the uh, reflection. So this negative indicates that we're going to reflect the graph of e to the x over the x-axis. So this is going to be a reflection over the x-axis. The reason it's a reflection over the x-axis is because if I choose f of x to be e to the x, then I want to obtain negative times f of x. And f of x is e to the x, so it'll be negative e to the x. That's a reflection over the x-axis. So if I reflect it about this line right here, because that is the x-axis, my point 0, negative 1 will come right here, become 0, negative, uh, 0, 1 becomes 0, negative 1. And then you just preserve the shape of the graph, so it's going to get closer to the y-x-axis and now uh, connect. So hopefully I can do this to so something like this. So not the best drawing, at least you got the idea. This point right here is zero negative one. By reflecting over the y uh, x-axis, you don't really change the asymptote because it's still there. Only the point, the y-intercept changed and the range will change too because now the graph is facing downward. This is our final sketch for f of x equals negative e to the x. Now let's go ahead and write down the domain of this graph. So what will be the domain of this function? 
Well, the domain never changes, negative infinity to infinity. So it doesn't matter what x value I plug in, everything makes sense, nothing makes it undefined. And the range of this function, so that changed. Now, if you only look at the, the final sketch, so let's ignore that, that was the basic. So if you look at the range, the lowest value for the y will be as far as we go. So as low as we can go, that's what this indicates. And then it just keep on going, getting closer to the asymptote. So the range would be from negative infinity up to the asymptote. And the asymptote is still there. So we can say the horizontal asymptote is still y equals zero. Now we're gonna go ahead and graph this function by using transformations. So we're, again, starting with e to the x, because that's the form of this function. And then we have a negative in front of x, we have negative three. So we're gonna take care of those as we continue. So let's start with the basic shape. So we know we're going to start with the natural exponential function, which is e to the x. So you start with that. So your graph of e to the x looks like this. So here's our graph for e to the x, something like this. This is the point 0, 1. And the x-axis representing the asymptote y equals 0. And then we're going to obtain this guy right here, e to the negative x. So that negative x indicates a reflection. So now because your independent variable has a negative sign, it's a reflection over the y-axis. So this is going to, be, going to be a reflection over the y-axis. And then after that, we're gonna do this minus three. So that minus three indicates a vertical shift. So we're gonna travel down. So we take e to the negative x and then go down three units. So we write down, down three units. That will give us our final sketch, and then we write down the domain range and the new asymptote. So um, let's reflect. So the first transformation we're doing is a reflection. So if you reflect about the y-axis, your graph is gonna look like this. So something like that, reflecting about the y-axis. So this point is still there, the asymptote is still there, nothing changed. And now I'm gonna take that and just go down three units. So if I go down three units, initially my asymptote is right here. So if you go down three units, you just take that and subtract three. So you're going down three units. So the new horizontal asymptote will be right here. So I have one, two, three at negative three. So I'm gonna indicate that using dotted line. So I simply took y equals zero and subtracted three. So this is now y equals negative three. And the next thing I'm gonna do is take my graph and shift it down. So one point you always wanna pick from the graph is this one right here, shift it down three units. So the y coordinate one, you subtract uh, three from it. So you do one minus three, that's negative two. So one, two, three, that's right here. So the graph is gonna be sitting right there now let's make the shape so that everything transfer over to the new graph. So we're coming from above like this, hitting that point and just getting closer to the asymptote. Something like that, roughly sketched. That is your final sketch, uh, sketch for h of x is equal to e to the negative x minus three. So now let's ignore everything else. So they're not part of our picture any longer. We don't need them. This is our final sketch. I hope this makes sense. Now, if you want, you can label this uh, intercept right here. X-intercept is when Y is zero. So you might need to do some logarithms to find the um, X-intercept. So that's not what I'm gonna discuss in this video, but sure, you can find that point. Let's go ahead and write down the last piece of information, which is the domain range and the asymptote. So the domain of this new function, this graph that we just obtained, Again, for exponential, the domain is always all real numbers. The range seems to change when you start shifting up and down. So for this one, the lowest value we can obtain is get close to the asymptote, and then it's just gonna go up to infinity. So the range would be from the asymptote negative three to infinity. And the horizontal asymptote right here, we got it from the graph. So we say HA, it's gonna be Y equals negative three.
So there you have your piece of information for this particular graph. All right, so I hope this helped you understand exponential functions, specifically natural exponential. Take care, everyone.